Hey guys, it's uh, David again, and in uh, this video we are going to take a look at, uh, I guess, the most important new addition to Oxygen, uh, which is the CSS grid. And um, you might already seen that um, that uh, Oxygen 3.7 is already out, and it comes with the CSS grid and uh, composite elements. But in this video we are going to take a look at uh, the CSS grid. And the CSS grid will basically allow you to create a bit more intricate uh, layouts for blog posts or for galleries. So that's what we are actually going to be discovering in this video. So what I did is I created a new uh, page that, uh, that is called CSS grid. I got Oxygen 3.7 installed and I also have some posts right here with some, uh, well, I've already added uh, the featured images. To, the, uh, to these posts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my pages and I'm going to edit this CSS grid page with Oxygen. So what I'm going to start with is uh, I'm going to add a section like that and I'm going to make sure that I have some spacing. I usually remove it but for this example uh, I'm going to have some container padding top and bottom and inside I'm going to add a repeater. There we go. And uh, for the repeater, uh, for the query, I'm going to go with custom and then I'm just going to hit post and I'm going to apply the query parameters. And uh, what I want to do right now is I want to add, um, you know, like a mosaic blog layout. So what I'm going to, what, what we could start with is we could add uh, like a featured image and then a blog, a blog post uh, title. But what I want to do is uh, I want to add like a background image and I want to put uh, the title and maybe something like a bit of an excerpt uh, over that background image. So what, uh, what we could do is um, we could add a div or even better, we could add a link wrapper. And that link wrapper is going to, you know, once clicked, it's going to take us directly to that uh, post. So I'm going to choose data and I'm going to choose permalink. It's just, uh, you know, I think it's a good production technique, especially for the mobile devices, because, you know, when you are on your mobile devices and you're try trying to tap, tap on something, you don't want to look for uh, like a read more button or something like that. You want to make that uh, post a bit more accessible. So with that link wrapper created, I'm going to go to the advanced, I'm going to go to size and spacing, and I'm going to make sure that the width is set to 100%. Now inside this uh, link wrapper, as I said, I want to have uh, a title and I want to have a background uh, image, like a background featured image. So I'm going to go to background data and I'm going to choose featured image. And I am also going to make sure that um, the background size is set to cover. I don't want it to repeat. And I want to make sure that I got the left uh, and the top value set to 50%. So now what we can do is we can add that, um, well, the heading, the, the post title. So I'm going to choose heading and I'm going to double click on this guy and I'm going to choose insert data title and I don't want to link it. I just want to insert that title. And of course uh, we could, uh, you know, change the color of it. So I think I'm just going to go with simple white color. Going to make sure that the size is much, much smaller. Uh, 26, I guess 26 uh, would be fine. And also with my link wrapper, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to advanced size and spacing and uh, I'm going to add, um, let's add some padding like uh, maybe 25 pixels all around. We can change that uh, later, but for now I just want to see what I'm doing. And uh, again, with that link wrapper selected, I'm going to go to my uh, well primary tab and I'm going to make sure that everything is aligned to the left and the bottom. And now what we could do is we could add some excerpt, but uh, since um, my posts are generated with Faker Press plugin, uh, it tends to add like awkwardly long excerpts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like fake the, the excerpt, fake the fake excerpt. I'm just going to grab some lorem ipsum and I'm just going to add uh, a text module. And you know what? Maybe I'm just going to go to repeat, repeater and for now I'm just going to hit single mode. I don't want it, uh, I don't want it to update every every five seconds and I'm just going to type, we'll paste that in, change the text to white and this should be all right. If you want, you could maybe add like an overlay uh, to our background image if, uh, you know, if your images are not, uh, well, I mean, if there's not um, too much contrast between your text and the background image, it's a good idea to add some, you know, some like a separation, a visual separation. So again, I'm going to go to my link wrapper, advanced background. 
And I don't want to just add like a simple image overlay color. I want to make it a gradient. So I'm going to add one color stop and then another color stop. And the first guy is going to be white, but uh, I want to make it completely transparent. And this guy is going to be black. And I want this uh, the angle to be, let's see, like 180 maybe. This should be all right. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to normal mode to actually see all my, uh, all my well, block posts, I guess. So far, so good. I mean, um, you know, it, it kind of looks artsy maybe. And I guess if you wanted to, <laughs> I guess you could leave it like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my uh, repeater and actually now move on to the CSS uh, grid. So I'm going to go to this grid layout. And once we enable the grid, you can see that, well, for starters, we got a whole new set of options. And the most important things here is the column count and then the child span over, right? So what we could do is we could play around with the column count as, as and as soon as we do that, you can see that we are actually adding more and more columns to, uh, to our uh, layout. So um, what I want to do is I want to add maybe like a big, like a featured blog post uh, here in the top left, then we can add some some other uh, other uh, posts just to make it actually look like a mosaic. But uh, before we do that, you can see that we got a bit of a problem right here. I mean, some of these elements are not, uh, well, their height is not equal. So with my link wrapper selected, I'm going to go to advanced, size and spacing, and we're going to set the height to 100% to make sure that all these elements are nice and equal. So again, with the repeater, I'm going to go to grid layout and uh, I'm going to go to this child span override and all these like these puzzles, I guess, all these children and these uh, divs are actually your representation of all the elements that you have right here in your grid. So when we grab one, you can see that we can set the column span and the row span. So let's say that I would like this guy to span across my whole site. So what I would do since we have four columns right here, I'm just going to set it to four. And as you can see, this guy is now spanning across our whole uh, whole page. And if we do like uh, three, it's going to just span across uh, like 70%, 75% of our page. And we're going to have like a small, uh, small post uh, right here on the right. What we could also do is we could increase the row span. So if we set that we want it to be even bigger, so I guess we could span it like across four columns, uh, four, four rows and it would make it this big, a bit too big to my taste. Let's go with maybe three or maybe even two. This should be a bit better. But of course, we could also play around with the remaining elements as well. So let's say that uh, I will actually um, span this row uh, well, across three rows, <laughs> this child across three rows. So three columns, three, uh, three rows. And then I'm going to grab this one and uh, it's going to be spanning across one column, but maybe two rows and same for uh, this guy. And this guy is going to be spanning across four columns. Oh, I meant three columns like that to make a, a, a layout look something, you know, something like this. So now the thing to note here, to remember here is that uh, if you want to achieve uh, an effect like this, this basically a mosaic, a puzzle effect, you, you got to just count the rows. So if we got two rows right uh, right here we got two rows right here these two rows um, their span has to you know, sum up to three and one mm, well one is by default but we can insert it here so we got one and three so that's four we got two and two here and that's four two and uh, as long as these guys you know well they are equal like this left side equals the right side uh, you're gonna you, you can achieve this kind of a layout uh, quite easily so with these guys, I might maybe span this guy across two columns, um, this guy as well, to have something like this. And uh, for these guys, let's maybe do like four columns for this one. And uh, these guys, uh, maybe again, uh, let's span it two and this guy two, just to have something like this. And now with these guys, uh, maybe I'm gonna do again like four. So you can see that we, can, we are kind of like creating an alternating uh, layout. If you want, you could actually also maybe play around with the padding, with the spacing of all these elements. So if we, uh, if we have our repeater selected, you can see that we got this gap 
right here that uh, by default is set to 20 we can make it like 10 and we could also uh, do the same for our gap of uh, for the columns that was for the rows and for the columns to make it 10 to make these guys a bit closer together but we could also go to our link wrapper size and spacing and maybe like increase this pattern to something like 250. We could also just grab our repeater and uh, maybe we could go to our grid layout and maybe increase the column count to something like six but then of course we would have to play around with uh, these elements too so we could like, like maybe spend this across four mm, columns this guy across two columns same for uh, this guy and let's spend this guy across four columns there we go so now we have like a bit more room right here and then with these guys uh, we could maybe do like three and this guy three and maybe let's do row span two why not and let's grab this guy and let's make it three so you know to make it look something like this just so it's like an like an alternating mosaic so to speak and then I'm gonna grab this one and uh, okay let's leave it at two and let's make this guy four because why not as you can see with the CSS uh, grid you get uh, total total flexibility so we still got four so maybe let's go three and then three and then three and then three so this would be our layout I'm going to save it and I'm gonna see it in the front end so this is actually our uh, our mosaic as you can see uh, I think it was quite easy to achieve once you just you know click a bit once you get to know CSS grid you'll be amazed at um, you know how easy it is to uh, to create uh, layouts that are actually you know I mean that they seem that they are really complicated but once you learn the CSS grid you'll be able to create uh, these for your own projects for your own clients quite quite easily so I hope you like this little tutorial uh, I hope you will come back for more as always have a nice design